Hello, everybody. I was slaughtered yesterday because my voice was gone. It's back-ish. Um, so thank you guys for bothering me all day. Um, I want to talk today about Into the Wild, but also a little bit about myself. And I also brought in the timeline issue that we all talk about a little bit, um, how to use that in your advantage, mainly. Um, this is me. Uh, I work in Amsterdam. I work with media monks now for eight years. Um, it's quite long, and it's every year there's a new challenge, so there's, there's always something for me uh, to do. Um, so I started eight years ago, 80 monks, two offices, one time zone. Then New York came in, then Los Angeles, uh, Singapore followed, and all these offices, I, I went there as the first on the ground to, to, uh, yeah, to build up the company. Uh, then a y this year, la oh sorry, last year it looks kind of like this, and then this year the the merger happened, and uh, I lost track. Most of us lost uh, lost track uh, of how big the company has been, um, but um, the way of working stays the same, and that's actually uh, what uh, what I wanted to illustrate today. Uh, with Into the Wild, for instance, it's a project that we worked on uh, three years ago, so it's pretty old. Um, for my standards, uh, but it's still super relevant for the work we do today um, and uh, also for how we challenge uh, projects like that. Uh, this is one of the, the slides I use a lot to just illustrate um, where we are. Where's the laser thingy? Here. I'm based in Amsterdam with the full production team, um, but Into the Wild was of course built in uh, for Singapore. Uh, but we also work a lot with New York or Los Angeles, and that just yeah, gives you an extra opportunity to work more hours, so um, we embrace that. <laughs> this is my world, so of course, uh, storytelling first. I'm a creative, creative director, and every idea just starts here uh, before you bring in technology. You can also say, I want something augmented reality, but then still you need to go back to that storytelling layer of, okay, cool, but what are we achieving with it. Then, of course, technology, but not just AR, but mainly why, what can it do? What is it used for? Uh, what are the limitations of that technology and how can I make the most of it uh, out of it? So this, this really makes us stand out from most other creatives since we understand storytelling and we know or we can get to the information that the technology, um, well, it will almost uh, always limit you, but it's, uh, if you understand it well, you can actually go up and beyond and uh, make a great user experience. That's, of course, the next uh, part. You always have to take into account culture, user groups, uh, or whatever uh, the client is trying to achieve. That's also part of your, uh, of your brief, of course. So all those things together is freaking awesome. Then what I want to talk about mainly today is, well, use those timelines in your advantage. Um, that actually means have the right team. So if you have a very cultured focused team uh, for China, for instance, you definitely make sure there are chi Chinese people involved in that. We, we have them, you just need to find them and, and put them, assign them to the, to the project. But it's also about um, who works well together, uh, who has the right art direction mind for this type of project. So it's, this is really core uh, of my daily job uh, currently, just to get the right teams on the brief uh, to, to have a good synergy within the teams. Um, this is also great. I, uh, I'm, I'm sure you all know that eight years ago we made these great InDesign files and we sent the package off and everything broke and, and everybody panicked in the, in the meeting. Today we use a lot of Google, Google Slides and you just set up a file and everybody can contribute at any time. You can shift things around and um, yeah, that really made a change. And the same for, for Hangouts, for instance. It's, uh, yeah, video calls are so, so normal these days that it doesn't really matter where you are, as long as you're awake. And a dedicated client. Um, that's definitely uh, super true for this project, where we had uh, WWF, Google, Lenovo, and the Art Science Museum. Four clients, sounds like a trap. Um, but in this case, we were able to just steer the conversation and really um, uh, get everybody together and make decisions um, to get to a great end result. 
So really click, uh, quickly, what was it about? Um, they wanted to show the problem of, um, well, the, 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 the for deforestation that happens in, in the area of Asia. And Singapore has a lot of, uh, the smoke uh, comes in and, and Singaporeans don't really bother or know what it com is coming from or what effect it has. So we wanted to um, tell that story and bring that close to the, to the target audience. And that resulted into the wild. Um, it became the largest mixed reality installation in the world. I still can say it's still the biggest, although it's discontinued after 30 months. Um, this is the end result. This is what we, uh, in the end, uh, have made. Um, and it's a 10,000 square virtual interactive rainforest that you could actually physically walk through um, with the Lenovo device. Um, so this all sounds pretty straightforward and yeah, cool, but this is actually the thing that all came together two days before the deadline. Um, uh, yeah, it, it easily couldn't, uh, it, it could have uh, failed uh, at every step along the way. So how did we go about this? So um, of course, first understanding the technology that you have. So Google was in there with Lenovo uh, to showcase their technology. They, this is three years ago, augmented reality was something everybody wanted to be in. And um, it's, it's just, you want it to be mobile, but not, the mobiles are not strong enough yet. Even today, it's still a struggle to have really good augmented reality apps because the tracking is just hard. It, it, if it starts floating or if, if the occlusion doesn't work well, it breaks the illusion. Um, this device could do that um, if you understood how that works. Um, and just briefly how it works, uh, this, this device used um, depth sensing. So you use the device to learn the environment and by doing so a couple of hundred of times, uh, you, you create a data set that this device can actually check from, oh yeah, and now I know where I am, now I know where I am, now I know where I am. And that way you could actually place all AR objects in the real space and for this device to know, oh, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Um, that's a big te technical, but um, this all happened in Singapore, the project. It was for uh, this museum, beautiful. The technology works really well when you have good features to define, so uh, some paintings on the walls or some uh, uh, yeah, just objects to, to scan and make it unique. Um, it doesn't work well with white walls or uh, lots of lights or light that changes. Uh, and initially this, this, the plan was to make little AR plots like this, this uh, space. We, we augmented it with a tree and something around it. That was the initial idea. But our creative technology uh, technologists went there to, to scout the area, talk with Google about it, and, and see what the technology could do. And he was like, well, fuck it. We're up for a challenge. Uh, we have ambitions. Let's go for the Oculus. It's a, it's a big circular uh, space, lots of lights. All, all walls were white. Um, let's go. Best case scenario to use. Um, so we were like, are you sure? You're the creative technologist, so you're, you're the one advising us uh, about what is a sensible thing to do. Um, so after a lot of discussions and stuff, we're like, yeah, well, why not? Let's go. Um, and that decision actually fell on two points. Mainly, it's AR, augmented reality. It's, it's for people, it's new. Uh, you want to guide them um, and not tell them too much in your interface. This, this museum really wanted to have an experience that just explained uh, itself. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and then this Oculus really helped because it's a circle of shape. So if you go in left, you get out at the right side. And you, yeah, you don't need signage of go left here, go right there, go up here. Um, so that was actually the main purpose to, to go for this space. Um, and then we, of course, get to the, uh, to the point of it's, uh, it was for Singapore. We are in Amsterdam, and in Singapore we had the technical director, so he was working closely with the Google team in Singapore and the clients, and had all these discussions with them. We also had a producer in Singapore that, that did the same, was there as well. And we were in Amsterdam um, together with a, a creative technologist uh, just working on the, on the project it, uh, itself. 
and communicate a lot through Hangouts, slides, all that stuff. We already had it back then. <laughs> so um, that actually uh, made that collaboration great because they, uh, it's it's just a six hour difference. So when their uh, day ends, our day starts. So you have a great overlap. Um, and they can test our build and see what's uh, working well or not. Um, so that, yeah, that was a great collaboration. Then of course, how are you going to build it? So we landed on this, this space, um, but yeah, we need to build a virtual world, a AR world with a story in it. And we were not here, so we, I had never been there. Um, and yeah, how are you create a story of a place that you don't know? Um, so I just started with the blueprints of now, this is, this is the, the blueprint. We tell a story here, we tell a story there, a little bit here, a little bit there, and then we get out and plant a tree and we're done. Simple. Then um, we started drawing out the storyboards, really top level to get everybody on board on, uh, we walk here, we go there, there's an animal, you, you react on you when you get close. Um, and you go to the next plot where you walk in and you look up to the, the pangolin, it goes up and then all of a sudden you see the tiger and this is the way we just plotted the stories for the AR experience, which seems very simple um, in, from a story level, but this already took a while to get the clients on board to, um, yeah, to, to align on the type of story we wanted to tell. And then, of course, yeah, you need to build. So we put this really quickly in, in uh, 3D um, and just started to build yeah, the, the space itself. It, it needed to feel like a rainforest and it needed to start in AR. We needed to guide you into this, this corridor here and then walk the full circle and get out of it again. And you see these nice little red scribbles that nobody can read. That's actually where we jumped into VR, to actually have the sense of space, of how big is this space actually. And then that's me just drawing with yeah, lines to, to brief our 3D artists, like, okay, this story needs to happen here. And if, you, if, you, if this yellow block, that's an animal, it goes up onto the, uh, on the tree trunk. And when it's there, you see the tiger. You get it, right? Um, they did. So uh, they started to plot uh, actual uh, uh, 3D files on it and, and started to build that whole rainforest. And then we get to the, um, to the technical challenges again, like turning a physical building into a rainforest through a mobile device has a lot of limitations because it's, it's a mobile device. It cannot render like full-blown 3D worlds like you know from your, your console and PCs. It's a mobile device, it burns up after two minutes and uh, you, so, you, you don't see any, uh, anything anymore. So we had a big challenge of how far can we, pu can we push this 3D look? And of course you could say, hey, let's go uh, in the polygon style, which in the end, yes, you do that, but it, you don't have to uh, default back to that actual style because you want to make it feel real, like a feel real rainforest that you walk into and it really appears uh, around you here. You have a little impression of how, in the end, first in AR we guided you to this corridor and then this whole, whole rainforest appeared around you. So it goes from AR to an actual VR experience, but you kept on walking with your device through that corridor, just on your own pace, you could really explore uh, uh, the whole scene. For instance, this is the scene what I just talked about, like with the tree trunk, there's a little pangolin. He climbs up into the tree uh, and you're really looking just at it at in your, in your, uh, through your uh, mobile device. He, he, he goes up there and like, oh, how sweet. Oh, shit, tiger. And that's actually one of those moments that, that users really, really got onto. And this was m m one of my biggest uh, challenges with the client because they ended up in wanting to tell that story that everybody wants to tell in a film and you look forward and it ended up being a film almost, like everything happened in front of you. And this is one of those moments that I really wanted to guide the user to look back and something needed to happen. Um, so this, yeah, I'm really happy that this is still in. And like you can see the tiger, it's, it's, it is polygon, but, but having everything combined together uh, really made it a believable rainforest um, in that sense. So to wrap it up, this was a, I have 15 seconds left. Um, this was a project with Singapore in Amsterdam. So we had the whole development team in Amsterdam. 
And what we did was just send over packages every day to test out in the, in the museum with the TD and the producer there on the ground. And this is how, um, wait, wait, go. Ah, shit. This is how our days look like uh, from HQ. Is it now not playing anymore? Ah, oh, great. Sorry, guys. Yes. So we are sitting here in, uh, in Hangouts. This is Edo, one of the illustrators. Sam, that's the CT. I'm standing out of frame, of course. And Kate was the producer filming this experience and showing that it actually aligned. So this was our biggest fear. This happened two days before launch. It finally looked cool. Um, and it was aligned with the real world because that was really the biggest challenge we had. Like, yeah, you can come up with it, you can build it, but it needs to be aligned with the museum. Otherwise, you walk into a wall and it breaks the, yeah, the real physical uh, experience in that way. So to wrap it up, can I do that? Where's Bert? Okay. Oh, you're here. Hi. Um, okay, so uh, the biggest trick we played in this project was really um, keep your progression focused because it was a very 3D focused project. Um, we only had three months, we needed to land on a story and we had UI and we had all these complicated discussions with, with, with the stakeholders and stuff. Um, but I didn't want to show uh, not finished 3D because then they w would freak out or give feedback on stuff we couldn't do because it, it took us too much time to really explain all the uh, difficulties. So we um, Actually, we kept the client a bit out of the loop of the visual pro uh, progression. We just showed this is the key art that we're going for. You'll see it two days before live. Um, and they actually agreed. So uh, that was uh, our biggest win here. Um, I could tell a lot more, but I think it's time to stop, unfortunately. <laughs> but this is uh, one of those projects that actually illustrates how we tackle most of our projects, just to see, okay, what, what is technology, what is the story, and how can we get the most out of both, and, uh, well, create an award-winning project, because that is, in the end, what it ended up being. Thank you. <coughs>